Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Creamer joins me today to unpack the latest news in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashni. Can you tell us about the need to put to work South Africa's mineral endowment and public market advantages? You know, we've got a fantastic mineral endowment. We talk about it all the time, and it's got a great history with it. But we've also got a very strong Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. And people are saying, to get jobs now, to get investment in the ground, put those two together, for goodness sake. You know, and we don't have the same means of doing it that other countries have. You know, the Treasury has just turned its back on this issue. Mm -hmm. The Reserve Bank is now concerned. You know, how are we going to get people back into the stock exchange? Not only the big institutions, you know, the smaller investors as well. And I think that maybe we're seeing a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel here that because of what's happening at even industry level, perhaps we'll see a change at government level because I think the Johannesburg Stock Exchange has done everything it can. It needs some sort of public sector recognition now, some sort of support that other stock exchanges around the world get. And, and we've really got a strong stock exchange here. We don't want to weaken it. And we can really strengthen it if we link it now strongly with growth and bring in that investment that can come in and put it in the ground and, and let's get good stuff out along with jobs. So tell us about the collaboration between Johannesburg listed Orion Minerals and Uchalo. Yes, so you know Orion Minerals is primary listed in Sydney and the secondary listing is in Johannesburg and that Sydney has got a more egalitarian approach. You know the, the, the big investors have got special categories and they do enter, but the smaller investors are given the same chance to enter you know, into these special uh, share purchasing s systems that they have. Now, what Uchalo is trying to say, we can have it here if the industry cooperates. Okay, we're not getting public sector support, but let us as industry people get together. So. You know, Paul Miller and Errol Smart have got together on this where the South African residents will be treated in the same way to buy these shares as the Australian investors are and the Australian residents. And that's so important because they are developing a very important copper and zinc project, which is virtually a mine and ready to go, at Prisca but also at O'Keep, there's a lot that can be done there. And you can see that there are 23,000 South African shareholders in Orion already. So that retail level is proof that people have got appetite for this. This is a company which is not yet mining, it's on the brink of mining, but it's also exploring. And so here you've got 23,000 South African investors in there, you know, and you know the half of them or historically disadvantaged South Africans. So you're getting this opportunity for people to get in, yet you find that the Treasury just turns its back at the, for a long time now, you know, the public sector has not reached out to do what happens around the world. And we need to have it happening here, even if it comes in a different form. But we know that there's, there's that flow through that they have in Canada where it has helped the industry so much because it gives a tax incentive to, for people to get into operations like this. And they uh, also help the country's economy at the same time. And lastly, Martin, uh, with the help of today's technology, mining's dormant gold analyzer could be a potential gold optimizer. Yeah, this is just one of the things that, that have cropped up. You know, Brian Prothero has written Comro's Legacy. Comro, you know, for 30 years, you know, had hundreds of people researching and developing. It was the Chamber of Mines Research Organization. It used to be here in Johannesburg. We used to go and see what people were doing there. They were active across a broad front. Well, he's bringing out one thing at a time. But he's saying, you know, just look at this gold analyzer. It was in the final r end of the race to get into the market. But things changed at the Chamber of Mines Research Organization to the point where it couldn't cross the line. But 
at the time, people said, this has huge potential. It was also at a time when, you know, technology wasn't so strong mm -hmm. and the gold price was very low and it didn't move. It, if it fluctuated, you know, you, you sometimes got a bit of a benefit, but it was not at a high level. So they were constrained by this low gold price. So they said, let's develop this, this analyzer so, you know, we can run it across the reef there and see what gold is there because, you know, we don't want to mine something that's not going to give us a return. Look how opposite it is today. The gold price is at the highest level we've ever seen. Technology is at the highest level we've ever seen. There's artificial intelligence. And you have this background that's being created. And what is being suggested here is there's an opportunity to go back to a lot of these things, including this analyzer, so that you can run it across the reef and know what grade is in there, you know, which is very important to mine. And, and, and we can see now with the gold price and that, you can mine so much more than they could mine in those days. And so it could open up a, a revenue stream for our gold miners. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. To subscribe to Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly, please email subscriptions at cremamedia.ca.za.